Let's get more on the Fed decision with CNBC senior economics reporter Steve Leisman. Steve, um, what do you think, what do you walk away with as the, the, the most striking change in Fed Powell's, uh, Fed Chair Powell's tone today? Um, I think there's four things I would, I mm -hmm. would tell you. The first one is that uh, 75 basis points is a bold statement that Powell and the Fed will do what needs to be done to control inflation. They haven't done that in a very long time. And he said we could do 50 or 75 next time. It won't be common, but it's out there as a tool. The second one is the Fed has left la-la land in terms of believing that it could get away uh, with solving this inflation problem with a little trimming around the edges. It's got the shears out and it's ready to whack, I guess is the best way to put it, when it comes to an overgrown bush of inflation in the economy. And the third is the Fed and the market now being in better sync when it comes to where we're all headed here. Somebody raised the interesting question. Did the Fed, I think it was Tim, did the Fed lead the market? Did the market lead the Fed? It doesn't matter. They're a little bit closer on where we're going. It's worth looking at what the outlook is right now and the big bold change, not the 75, but in the outlook, they went from 1.9 for a Fed forecast for this year to 3.4, and then they went next year to 3.8, almost a full percentage point up higher or a full percentage point higher from where they were. So that's a big, big move by the median official or the median uh, 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 Fed official forecast right there. I think that's really important. The fourth thing I think that is worth taking away, there's those uh, uh, forecasts right there, what they, what they did in terms of moving up the outlook much closer to where the market is right now. Uh, and the market actually came down a little bit today to where they were. The fourth thing, Melissa, is how uncertain the, the Fed chair is about what actually needs to be done and whether or not he did say that the 3.8 uh, as, as the peak funds rate is within the plausible range of what's needed to get inflation. But he said it's very uncertain. And as you indicated earlier, very interesting that there's a lot of things about the inflation story that the Fed feels it can't do anything about. Uh, and I think it was interesting that there, the line of questioning from all of you reporters in the room w was sort of along the line of, of you know, uh, is recession going to be on the table in that if you keep raising rates, knowing that there's a large part of inflationary pressures that, that will not be relieved by monetary policy, at some point, you know, it's not just a sledgehammer that, that the Fed is using. It's a bulldozer because you're basically going to kill demand by just whacking the consumer and rolling them into the ground um, because you cannot control those inflationary pressures of food and energy. And yet here we are on this hiking path. Oh, that, that, that's right. But, but you think about what the alternative is. Could we, what kind of economy would we have if we had monthly inflation at 8 percent or 9 percent every month? Uh, it, it, it is the counterfactual doesn't even matter at that point. You know, it's like, um, what is the alternative? The alternative is 8 or 9% inflation. That will almost certainly lead to a recession. I still think, I'm the last guy out there, I think, that thinks we can skirt the recession here. And, and by that, I mean, if the Fed can get inflation down and it can end up at a 4% funds rate, I don't think that's the end of the world. I think we can have a normally functioning, growing economy at a 4% funds rate for at least a while while we get inflation down and then maybe ease back down to 3 I think that's something we can do. And I, I'm going to embrace a bit of Powell's optimism on this, that it's still possible to do it. But I would say the outlook is less certain. I mean, 4 percent. We're so we've been so spoiled by such low rates, Karen, that we forget that 4 percent is still historically low. So to Steve's point, maybe it is possible that we <laughs> go back to sort of a normally functioning economy. And recession isn't it's not just we're on or we're off, basically, when it comes to economic growth. Uh, I think that's right. But I also think for just in terms of how the markets would react, yeah. I feel like markets really hate uncertainty. And are we, are we not in recession? That's kind of uncertainty the market doesn't like. And, and I know Tim uh, was, you know, hoping for a, a sort of sharp, swift recession. I think that's actually better for the markets. I think you and I have talked about this as well. Is this the cure for the markets, a recession? Because then they would look forward and look through it and not be so uncertain about, well, are rates going to, you know, are, are, uh, is inflation going to come down? Are we going to be able to pass along prices? All of that. I think a recession actually is better for the markets. All right. Steve, thank you. Good to see Can you, Can I Steve just Leeson. disagree with that? Uh, okay, go ahead. I, disagree. I'm sorry. I, yes. I don't think <laughs> there's any situation where recession is better than the market. I'm not sure Karen really quite means that. I think, I think you I, have to try I to do. avoid it. No, no, I think, I, think, I really? think that these guys mean it. I think that there, it's not just Karen, actually, that, that a, a contra wow. severe contraction that's short 
and you know, that's sharp and short-lived, Tim is raising his hand, I think an agreement would be much better for the markets. Than what? Because we know than not just having a recession? hanging <laughs> over in, in a deeper, longer recession what? is What's a possibility. The difference? Why do you need it to be called a recession? Either your companies are growing or they're not growing, and you're going to invest on that. I mean, if I call it a recession, it doesn't really matter that much. You don't want to have a recession where, I'm sorry, you're raising your hand. You're being very polite. I'll be quiet now. But, yeah. Karen. No, no, no. Please finish. I'm just uh, getting in line. That's I, all. I was ahead. just saying that I just think that what you want to do, if you're Fed chair, if you're anybody, is you want to try to avoid a recession. You want to try to bring down inflation and attack it and not have a recession. We don't need a recession. We don't want a recession. It's the worst possible outcome for people on Main Street, and it's not a very good outcome for people on Wall Street. Karen? I, I disagree with the latter in that I understand why Jay Powell wouldn't want to have a recession. That, but it is possible that their desires and what Wall Street would trade better on are not the same thing, right? That they don't, we talk right now, you know, has the market trading down to forward his plan, which is fine, and that's what he should do. But I'm just saying, I really think the market would rather have recession and look forward to when we're out of it than whether we half a percent GDP growth or does it touch negative or. You know, I think that I, I don't think that really helps us that we that we avoid the term recession by not technically having negative GDP for two quarters. Um, I don't think that. Yeah. Tim, last word here and then we got to go wrap. <laughs> well, again, I, I, I also think that Main Street right now is well ahead of Wall Street in terms of where they sit. The consumer has a job. I, mm -hmm. I think technically the recession that happens in the economy is a bit of a reset in terms of if you can overcome inflation expectations and you can hit that with the, the sledgehammer and the bulldozer, that's more important right now. All right. Um, Steve, thank you as always for a spirited discussion.